110 miles west of Shetland. The Shehalyan and Loyal Fields were originally developed in the late 1990s. That was a very successful project. Shehalyan FPSO had actually produced 350 million barrels of oil. But it had really kind of reached the end of its useful life and its ability to produce the, the sorts of fluids that were being produced partway through the production of the field. The team were really struggling with an old FPSO and everyone could see the potential in the resource base and, and something needed to be done about it. With over two billion barrels in place, there's still enormous room to exploit further development. Quad 204 is a key part of our plan to double our production here in the UK and grow our worldwide production. So back in 2011, BP and its partners decided we'd do a redevelopment. We uh, needed to take the existing Shalin FPSO off station. Shalin production was suspended at the end of 2012 and through 2013 we had a programme of suspending the field, conditioning all the wells and making it safe, disconnecting all the risers, almost like peeling an orange and uh, lying them on the seabed and then disconnecting the moorings and taking the FPSO off and it went to, uh, to Rotterdam where we did the final preparation before we handed it over to uh, new ownership in the early part of 14. And that cleared the way for the brand new Glen Lyon FPSO. For Glen Lyon, I guess the story probably starts in Leatherhead actually, where, where a lot of the front end design work was done, then on to detailed design in Singapore, and then moved quickly on to Korea where the FPSO was built. The new FPSO is much larger, it's uh, 270 metres long. It's got much more power, three or four times the previous vessel. It can produce and handle a lot more water. It's got a large turret, 10,000 tonnes, 28 slots. That provides us with coal capability to put new production facilities in, so Glen Line can act as a hub for future prospects. We had operations actually involved with late engineering, package engineering, deeply immersed into packages of equipment that were being transported over to Korea and to ensure that the quality of those were, were assured. What we also did is we deployed um, technicians into commissioning roles. So they were doing frontline commissioning activities, actually testing plant and equipment to make sure it worked as per the design. Uh, we've spent a lot of time and effort building one integrated team uh, proud of our sites, proud of our project and proud of our safety performance and the teams worked incredibly hard together to build this really positive speak up safety culture where safety is a, a precondition to our work and just the way that we do business. The engineering team was there supporting the evolution, the design and also the implementation of it through the, through the construction phase. That came to an end when the FPSO sailed away at the end of uh, 2015 and uh, as, as the FPSOs transited back from Korea so has a lot of the, the team that's been supporting it so that we can work very closely together as we start to hand over systems to operations. It was a 110 day plus journey for the tour and that was the first time my team uh, had to really get their hands around the facility and we had people living on a facility for the first time. So the basics of an accommodation, a galley having to work, you know, lighting, HVAC systems, water systems, all had to work and had to be operated. Towing this gigantic FPSO around the world through different storms and conditions, stopping at some very strange places and doing all of that safely. So that, that transition and change was very difficult to manage. And through that period, we actually learned on that facility how to operate well, how to fix some problems, how to do maintenance well. And during all that phase, we had a team in Aberdeen supporting the facility remotely. So we were getting into that operational culture. The team that worked on it through all the design phases now very closely integrated to, to making sure we start up and then stay up. To be able to sort of produce the field sort of as the field is today and produce that field then for the next 20 years, we've also developed almost kind of new infrastructure subsea throughout to match up with the capacity of the new FPSO and, and, and replace some of the some of the aging infrastructure. We've tied into the existing wells which were already installed. 
and today we're part way through drilling further wells that we'll need um, to be able to produce the remaining reserves that are planned as, um, as, as part of development. The subsea system is you know, the largest subsea production facility in the world. It's absolutely enormous. Well, we've got 52 wells that we need to, to start up again. Multiple drill centres with multiple control distribution assemblies, all tied together with control leads that all have to be tested and ready for starting up, which we've, we've commissioned separately, bit by bit, in the order that we want to start up the fields. 52 wells were there when we suspended the field. We've got an infill programme that takes it beyond 70, and there's no other asset in the world with 70 wells. It's a, it's a massive control system. It is huge. Um, the biggest problem we have is that there's an existing brownfield system on the seabed that we have to interface with this new control system. A bit like going from analogue to digital, really, with a control system. We've got hydraulic controls, chemical injection lines, we've got electrical, power and comms. All of that goes through the control system to each tree, to the wells. We learned about every anomaly that existed. We, we, we prepared to find them. We did early testing onshore before we went offshore of, of all the test equipment. We, we did a lot of preparation. We had something like seven manifolds, 14 control structures, 21 new risers, three new uh, static umbilicals on the seabed, two, two dynamic risers, 15 flow lines, new flow lines, and then the mooring system and the new risers for the, for the new FPSO. So that, that whole campaign added up to something like 3,000 construction and pipe lay vessel days. Subsea constructions behind us, new FPSOs connected, and we've just entered into production. We've kicked off Shehalyan and Loyal Fields production, and that's very exciting for us. We have a, a great future. We have a really good plan to 2020 and beyond. Quad 204, it's an exciting project and it has a long future in front of it. We really are set up for continued success. We've revitalised the whole field and now we're going to give it another 25 years of life. I mean, that's, uh, that's a huge achievement for everyone. It's been fun, it's been a challenge. There's still more. We can keep on going. West of Shetland's got a lot more to offer. Full production, we'll be producing 130,000 barrels a day. It's just been a brilliant project to work on, you know, and one we're, we're really, really proud of.